Do you, you want to introduce your guest? Brandon Maxwell with Diligent Defense. All the way out here in yeah. West Texas. From yeah. Southwest Pennsylvania. I can't read that. Burgettstown. How do you pronounce it? Burgettstown. Burgettstown? Yep. It's That's a, a mouthful. It's a small town. I think classes graduate around 90 in the high school. Oh, that's double what I had. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't actually live in Burgettstown itself. We're just in the outskirts, and uh, that's our zip code and our high school we go to. So, but uh, yeah. Where did the name Diligent Defense come from? Um, well, we started in the solvent trap world, and we mm-hmm. immediately knew we wanted to work into the FFL and legitimate, you know, cans. And uh, we started an LLC with just me and my partner's last names. It's, it's called j m Concepts. And uh, we thought for a very long time, we wanted something to have like the acronym, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Of AAC or this or that. And we just struggled. And we all like DDC and Diligent Defense was one of the ones. And uh, we kind of like that. So we stuck with it. There's nothing. No. Super significant story behind no, it. No, no, super you significant. You should just make one story. up. Yep, that's just it. <laughs> How you persevered and were yes. diligent. You gotta stay diligent. And- it's it's really funny if nobody's ever actually trying to name anything. It's one of the hardest things you'll yes. ever do. Yes, yeah. Because everything to you sounds like sounds it sounds stupid. Like when you're coming up with ideas, until you realize like most names of most companies are actually are stupid. Yes, but you just they, they just they just roll with it. Yes, and you yes. just have to roll with it. I listened to Kevin Brittingham on a podcast once, and they were asking. Isn't he name. great? <laughs> they were asking about the name Q, and he said names are stupid. I just called it Q because what the fuck's it matter? <laughs> like, it's a name, and it works. Yeah, yeah. It works. I mean, yeah, that's kind of once you. I mean, and it settles in because I mean, it is a good. I mean, diligent, diligent defense. It's it's different, it, but it's not too much of right. anything. It's great. Yeah, we just like the DDC kind yeah. of thing, and uh, I do like y'all's logo, the one on the sticker. Yeah, we um we got tied up with a guy, a local guy that um that's what he does full time, but on the side he'll do. And uh I've gave him next to zero instruction and he just makes awesome shirts, awesome yeah. everything. So we've lucked out there. It uh it's good it makes good stickers. To me, when you're coming up with a name or and or a logo, it has to print well on a shirt. It has yeah. to look good on stickers. Yeah. So I mean it's pretty yeah, you kind of made it look like a flag yep. with a flag in it, and yep. uh, we're big on the American made. And um, yeah, so I suppose my question to you: We're just going to kind of go whatever we want to talk about here. Why is it? How did you have the forethought to pay attention to predator hunters? That's- <laughs> like. <laughs> So I didn't want to be a, a fake in the market, you know what I mean? Right. It's just hunting in general has been my thing, and uh, I've always loved watching predator hunting shows. That's the only shows I've ever watched. Mm-hmm. And um, for the longest time, we believed that you could only call and kill coyotes out west. It must be it must be dumber <laughs> there, you know? Yeah. And uh, my family's not really into hunting, but growing up, that's just what I did since I was, you know, 12 with a BB gun, killed everything. But my buddies families were and uh they had the old uh johnny stewart's Mm -hmm. with the cassette tape and the horn that's on top of that yeah little plastic box and we tried and you know you call it a hawk or something that's about it yeah and uh it wasn't until i got into the thermal stuff that i realized but um as far as to circle back on the predator stuff it's uh that's just what i like man It's, it's yeah i um as soon as i got into the thermal i i still deer hunt and mm-hmm. but uh as far as a couple nights a week i try to sneak out and yeah chase predators so you, do y'all have where you live do y'all have any red fox yeah yep we got red fox gray fox um right when i was graduating high school is when we kind of it was possible to call in and kill fox and uh we had very few coyotes and uh the fox yeah. all at once disappeared and you'll still find some honey holes that hold fox but uh overall the coyotes just took over yep why do you, I mean, obviously you're having great success with, you know, I guess supporting the predator hunting industry. Why do you think other suppressor companies don't seem to realize that? I don't, I mean, what are your thoughts on it? Like what, 
other than the fact you liked was that the only reason why you're kind of like you you start looking at these contests and looking at texas being a big market like was it only because you like predator hunting or were you just like man, no one really pays attention to these guys and they seem to spend a shitload of money on equipment i support you know all guns and love all gun everything but i gravitate towards the the thing you hunting enjoy. and what i do and um i wanted to push to the people that uh you know i can relate with yeah. and um I started doing a lot of searching of competitions all across the country. Um, made friends with a lot of people over the last couple of years that I talked to. And uh, I started watching the West Texas hunt and um, there was no suppressor sponsors. Yeah. And I was like, shoot, we'll uh, jump on board with that and got a hold of them. And uh, it's been great for us and love supporting them. And um, this year, we're the third suppressor sponsor now. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, and that's what I think the more the merrier, to be honest, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I don't know. It just seems like, well, I, mean, I can speak from personal experience of this. I mean, I've been selling suppressors for damn near 10 years now, uh, somewhat involved with it in some capacity. Uh, all the marketing has always been towards the tactical Timmy military, yes. you know, aspect right. of it. And all the the product structures are really directed around that. But whenever I would sell suppressors, you know, because what Texas made hunting with suppressors legal, I think it was 2012, maybe 2011, somewhere in there. Um, It was overwhelmingly to hunters, all the brands, you know, be it Surefire or anything else. They're all like hunters were the ones primarily buying suppressors because they had an actual use for it. Right. Versus... uh, uh, you know, versus the uh, the tactical guys, which I think now they've they've been adopting them a lot more. But there was always like that incongruence, um, and so it's interesting. Y'all kind of slid right there in a perfect spot in the market segment. Yeah, where because we've been saying it for years, like you need. There's no reason these suppressors should be you know thirteen hundred dollars, thousand dollars. You need something like you just need a simple system, the suppressor that goes on a gun. It doesn't need complicated marketing. It just needs to be a suppressor that works. And I feel like you guys kind of hit that like. Like, like right in that sweet spot. Yeah, going into this, um, when I was designing the Enticer line, um, the Nomad TI and the Nomad, what is it, LT, mm-hmm. were my two favorite cans, hands down. Yeah. And um, basically, I thought they were expensive. Yeah. And uh, doing everything in-house, we could still be profitable. And uh, just quality control, we can do everything. And um, those were my targets. Those were the... Those were the milestones we were trying to hit was to be yeah, uh, smaller, lighter, as quiet. Um, we got them, according to Pew Science, quieter at the year. Yeah. But um, the muzzle, our muzzle's a little louder. Overall, um, pretty much a wash. But uh, as far as durability goes, I see ours are holding up better. You're definitely getting them out to the right people for destructive testing. Destructive testing, yeah. <laughs> I said it once. I said it a million times. Predator hunters are the hardest people on shit. Like I guarantee that rivals military groups because they're also kind of the same mind space sometimes. Like, oh, I need a hammer. Let me use my suppressor. Like that kind of shit, and they yeah. don't take care of it. Right. Uh, it's, one of these days, I just want to go around to these contests and uh, go hunting with people and just photograph their firearms. <laughs> Is that, I don't know how many you how many guys you've hunted with and how you've seen like. This might be a seven thousand dollar custom rifle, but it literally, especially out here, it literally looks like it's been sandblasted, drugged behind a pickup. Like they, they're the most, and to me, it's it's super unique to look at them. They're suppressors; they never run covers or anything. They're just like beat to shit. Yep, paints missing, and because they they tend to just get one thing and they run the living piss out of it. I think it'd be awesome to have a book of just literally pictures of these rifles that are just used the shit out of. Yeah. Because, again, because people don't understand, like, predator hunters shoot way more on the, you know, majority of them shoot way more than, say, a deer hunter. Right. Which is why predator hunters really gravitate towards a suppressor. Because they're shooting way more than the deer hunters once a year. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it's like a... Uh, what a tr- like what traits qualities or whatever of a person attracts to predator hunting they tend to be really hard on equipment 
<laughs> so, so your shit's getting like deeply well tested. I oh yeah, you. absolutely. And that's the same. I'm not very good with um, <laughs> a good night of calling. You know, is oh yeah, four or five stands. Yeah. Typically, you you're rushing from A to B, mm-hmm. and uh, the tripod gets my gun gets placed in last, but it's never nice. It's yeah. on top of a dead coyote, and yeah. it's getting beat around on the back of the side by side. And uh, yep, that's the way. and yeah, it's. To me, the best way to test equipment is give it to a predator hunter. He's gonna he's gonna tear it up regardless at yeah. some point. <laughs> but how long it lasts is kind of a pretty good deterrent. Like if it can make a year with a uh, pretty dedicated predator hunter who hunts kind of throughout the entire season, yeah, it's probably gonna be pretty good. <laughs> yeah the um, the Arca Swiss and ball head mount is uh it's a blessing for, you know, before I used to carry the gun and the mm-hmm. tripod separately and they're just yeah. beating the piss out of each other the whole way of walking. Yeah. So now I just carry the whole complete rig yeah. on my back and uh, that's been nice. But what I've also found is it's been about four times now you get a big wind gust and there goes my, uh, there goes my <laughs> yeah. $10,000 rig yeah. just smashing into the gravel or the grass or, yeah. Um, luckily it's been holding up all right though. So... Y'all started out making solvent traps when Great. that was a that was a big thing for a long time. Like yep. some people may not even know this. Used to you can go to a gun show and there would just be tons of solvent traps available and all that stuff. What even like what got you in the solvent traps to begin with? You just wanted one for yourself? No, um, my partner and myself were both into uh, doing side hustles mm-hmm. and. Uh, I don't know what year it was. I found a Facebook marketplace CNC machine and slapped it in my garage and found a little line of work that I was doing some oil field stuff for some rush work overnight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, just was always looking for little gigs. Um, my partner I met, he was, we vaguely knew each other growing up just from motorcycles and BMX and stuff. Um, and he became a point of contact for my, family's business and uh me and him worked together and he seen i had machines and he started putting machines in his garage and uh stumbled into the world of solvent traps and facebook groups and we sat back for a long time and just watched right and started reaching out to the atf and the legal end of it just to make sure we weren't gonna land in prison and got the go ahead and uh basically just jumped in with both feet and in that two years we we did really well. Uh, as soon as we started, we started down the road to getting our FFL, yeah, um, SOT, and sound meters. We started out with the BNK 2209. When the solvent trap stuff started going better, we bought the Pulse system. And basically, it was feeding the Form 1 world, but uh, we were all along working for the right. diligent enticers, you know. So yeah. it was kind of a, it was nice. That was our gravy train we had. Basically just used all that to Fun. come up with a good design come up with a good design and it funded everything for diligent right. so it worked out good for us so y'all officially launched diligent how long ago um it was the west texas big bobcat in january of last year um we've had a couple years of testing right uh, baffle designs destructive testing so it wasn't something we just rushed to market with you know right so it was pretty the entire line was pretty well thoroughly tested before y'all yep, just absolutely now in the entire line like give me the lineup like what all the cans are and all that so stuff. we have the stainless line which is the s and the l uh the s is six and three quarters in length the l's eight and a quarter and then we have the titanium series which is the sti tie for titanium and the lti mm-hmm. same length same same design completely same sound performance it's just uh if you want the stainless to be more of a mag dumper you're trying to save a buck go for it yeah or the titanium if you want to you know i always push the sti to the hunters because i've not used a better can yeah especially i mean people ask me this i was talking to a guy just last night before going to bed he was asking me about what what diligent cans and all that and i'm like there's a lot of people you're it seems like anyways a lot of people nowadays are starting to build night rigs and day rigs you know whether it be night rig has thermal day rig as day optic whatever the case may be and they're asking what cans i'm i always go daytime hunting if you're going to do any kind of ground and pound type stuff get the ti's uh my personal opinion keep as much weight off as possible right 
Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if, like, if you're hunting a contest where it's go, 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 go the entire time, a lot of people don't think about stuff like carrying around unnecessary weight will tire you. That's making you more sure. tired throughout the night. So I try to, my daytime stuff, I try to keep lightweight as possible. So TI cans, the whole platform, lightweight, short barreled, everything else. Nighttime, though, we're hunting out of a high rack, long barrel, you know, the the incinerating cartridges, like, you know, flat right. shooting as possible. And I like to run the L cans. Like, I'm going to, I want to I wanna run as quiet as possible. So run the longer cans. And at that point, to me, and, and I don't even care if how heavy it is because it's literally uh, most stuff we hunt. We don't even get out of the rack. We pull into the ranch and you get up in the rack and you stay in the rack all night. So as far as weight, like I'll build a much heavier rifle, long barrel, uh, big old heavy optic. Like I don't even care about weight whatsoever. I just care about does it shoot really good, shoot really flat, and it's super quiet. So I'll go with like your L cans, the Nomad L's, like all them super long cans that, you know, quiet right. down as much as possible. That's where I kind of end up. And that's where I kind of, when people are asking for suggestions. But at the same time, it's like, well, if you're running a shorty AR, uh, you know, 10, 11, 14, whatever inch barrel, and you can still get away with a longer can to quieten them loud suck, suckers down right. even more. It just, it just, you know, at the end of the day, it just partial preference. But it, to me, if you're going to be doing any kind of ground pound stuff, spend extra money to get the titanium it's just yeah less weight yeah i um to be honest i don't have any of the long cans on anything besides for the novelty guns right the sound difference to me isn't worth the extra weight and um getting in and out of the side by side having a couple inches shorter normally makes a difference yeah. just smashing yeah. my roll cage and may as well hit a hammer on something yeah you know? oh yeah especially yeah, you, if you're only hunting 20 yards from your rig the you know? worst sound in the world make one predator hunt it's tinging metal yep. you know you don't uh, that, for a long time, that's why I would most of my nighttime rigs always put suppressor covers on them. Right. I don't want anything to make noise or anything like right. that. So, as far as the uh, enticer stainless steel, they're the ones that that are they look like a what's the color you would say brown bronze, bronze. A bronze a polished bronze kind of, which I think they're cool as shit looking myself. Uh, what is retail on those? You're hitting me here hard. I, I think they're 500. I um. Do you remember? It's in the 500 range. I think it's 500. So, I, I think we charge maybe 15 to Cerakote them. I um, my wife and uh, our commerce site does most of that because <laughs> everything's automatic now. I rarely talk about prices and right. I typically forget something in a day or so. Yeah, and that, that's so. For what you're getting in that price point, even even the stainless steel enticer s which is a short one which mm -hmm. is do we have one in here no i didn't bring any they're gonna be a, they're gonna be this length but it's gonna be the stainless yep. one yep uh th for anybody who's asking me who don't want to spend a lot of money and to my personal opinion that is the best bang for your buck right. I, I push that one towards as many people as possible because of the performance you get and it's it's so compact and small even for the even the stainless one is super lightweight in my opinion right compare when you start comparing to a bunch of other suppressors. Yeah. A lot of the printed ones are super heavy. And then uh, past that, I'm just like, what do you want to spend? Because the, the TI ones are awesome, especially for daytime hunting, long range hunting. That uh, most of my long range hunting rifles that I'll pack around, they get the uh, TI, the mm -hmm. short TI. Because, you know, you're not going to be shooting a lot. So you want to keep, you obviously want to shoot suppress because you're civilized. You want to keep the weight down as much as possible. Compact package. That that one to me, it just hits the nail on the head. I mean, it's it's pretty much perfect. But entry level pricing. That one can for five hundred dollars is pretty hard to beat, or whatever the yeah. Fitzy needs to say it's five hundred. I think. Let me pull up. Starts to get the other ones. Entry level five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. That's and pretty hard to beat. I think if you get it Cerakoted, it's five fifteen. Yeah. What all colors do y'all sell? Uh, we started out with FDE and black, and we probably will go back to offering that again. But um, we're still in our infancy, right. and uh, it's just shocking how many different. It just causes problem after problem after problem as far as managing an order. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. You uh, have a dealer that orders 
three FDE, three black. We ran out of FDE flash caps, but we have black flash caps. Now you got a whole order sitting for two days while we're making flash caps because all the right. other ones are black or raw. Or Yeah, you start getting stainless titanium. Then you start getting all the different bore size in the caps. Then the different colors, it's just, you know. <laughs> it's a lot, to, a lot yeah, going it's on. it's a lot to manage for a couple people. Yeah. So as far as the uh, the wolf hunter, is your is your is it officially launched yet? Yeah, it's officially launched, but um, we have not pushed it at all because um, first of the year we got absolutely hammered. Right. I don't want to advertise and push something and then say, "Hey, eight weeks." You know what right. I mean? So we've just kind of pumped the brakes until yeah. uh, we can get spooled up. Um, we got another machine on the way. We just got another machine in last week. We're we're up to seven lathes in our shop now and two mills. That's awesome. So as far as the wolf hunter, what is the difference? Say, what is the difference between the wolf hunter and the, I'm so terrible with the names, Enticer, Enticer. STI. It's like the simplest product line. I don't I know. know how you, like there's. You also got to think all the shit I'm trying to have S- to remember. S-L-T-I. I know the S and L. I can get that, but I'm scared I'm going to call it by the wrong name, you know? Yeah. So, so um, basically, um, it's a very similar design and it's not out of being lazy. We tried right. everything. The enticer design is just freaking awesome. And when you put the six millimeter flash cap on an enticer, something about the baffle design, and I wish I could explain it, but uh, you put a smaller flash cap on a dead air, it helps. Mm-hmm. You put the smaller flash cap on the enticer and it it's a world of difference. And uh, it was really hard to beat that when right. we were chasing down a dedicated six millimeter can yeah and um it's a very similar design the clips are a little bit different and um the general bore in the wolf hunter is still 0.375 which mm-hmm. is a generous bore for a 30 cal but right in dead center we put one six millimeter baffle so um it kind of acts as two chambers you know what right. I mean? you get yep. that huge shot of gas pressure in and uh it works really well. We were able to pick up another four decibel at the year. Yeah. Um, I was actually hoping to get a little bit more, but I think we're so close to right. what is possible. You right. know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's uh, getting diminishing returns now at this right. point. Um, so is that can, was that can in response to the six millimeter arc or like what was the, why did y'all want to come out with that can? Predator hunting. It's just the 20, the <laughs> yeah. 20, uh, a 22 caliber and a six millimeter so close. Right. There's a demand for a 22 caliber. Yes. And I'm like, you're, you're not gaining anything over not right. calling it a six millimeter. Right. So, um, you got the, the legendary 22, 250 mm-hmm. and, uh, the six arcs, you know, starting to jump on board. Uh, then you got the six Creed more. Yep. You got the, a lot of two forty three guys. Yeah. Um, there's a market for it. And, uh, I still push everybody to entice their STI if they're new to the can game, but if they want a dedicated can, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's your first can and you want to be able to jump it around. Right. All different. Of the calibers. All day long. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you shoot those cans 30 seconds apart, you're going to be hard pressed to tell which can's quieter. Right. But right. if it's boom, boom, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely pick up on it. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, That's what I tell people that, uh, you can't almost, when I used to play with this stuff a lot more, I would swap out in caps and everything else. I would tell people like, you can hear the difference, uh, in just in caps in most suppressors that you can swap out the in cap, but it, it's not Johnny who just bought a suppressor. Probably majority of times not going to tell the difference, but if you're shooting a lot, which tends to happen once you get into the suppressor game, right? You start shooting more because you enjoy it way more. You could definitely start hearing the difference and, to me, it's worth it. I mean, it, you know, we're we're literally running these to keep it as quiet as possible. Right. So why not try and make it as quiet as possible? But also be aware, don't put the Wolf Hunter on a 308. <laughs> just, just, don't, just don't shoot a 308. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just don't shoot I mean, shoot it's a literally, yeah. it's literally six millimeter and down. Like, it says it on the end cab, you know. Yeah. Have y'all, <clears throat> I'm curious as far as uh, destruction testing. Have y'all seen what would happen if they screwed a wolf hunter onto a 308? Uh, it turns it into an enticer. 
Because <laughs> I with myself minimal, have done something of that sort one with, time. With fairly minimal damage, to be honest. That's good. I definitely did more testing on the flash caps because I was worried yeah. if that would cause a pre- you know a pressure spike. So I've stuck a our three thirty eight can or our eight six can and put a twenty two cap on it, mm-hmm. and it just punches it open. It, it doesn't hurt anything. Well, that's good to know, but Besides don't do it at home. <laughs> yeah, just don't do it at home. But yeah, we do our best to make sure everyone's right. safety is you know because yeah. um, I would assume most of the cans we've sold to date are still sitting in jail. Probably. And it's surprising the amount of people, uh, hey, I sh- switched my can and punched open my 22 cap or my six millimeter cap. And I'm like, no big deal. Right. There, I mean, there are some gun shops here in Texas that'll let you go, that are gun range gun shops. Yeah. They'll let you go, mm-hmm. get your can out of jail and shoot it there on their premises and put it back when have they a, leave. Have a conjugal visit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it, it probably. There's probably lots of people who have FFLs solely so they can get suppressors in their hands quicker. I'm sure. Not, not us. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not us. Uh-uh. <laughs> so. I couldn't imagine. I, I, it, it, it is interesting because the market has gotten so quick. Yes. And I've become so desensitized. To like, oh, new suppressor comes yeah. in. It's mine. I go immediately shoot it. And it is weird to think that like you could have something for a year, a product out for a year before the ba- the vast majority of the people who bought it have even touched it you yeah know? and then the worst part is because of the the suppressor market seems to have like really been kind of challenging each other like making better and newer shit and everything yeah a lot of these poor guys by the time they get their suppressors there's already something way better out i was just gonna <laughs> say that and the only uh industry worse at doing that's the thermals exactly oh, very fine. very much relatable and most of these guys are putting them on cards by the time they get their thermal paid off there's yeah, already it's two fucking new out of date. there's already two new generations ahead of it and it's the same price or cheaper it's like it's like me uh and they've gotten way easier i'll say that but when i would get a thermal it would because i'm not i'm not the type that's going to sit down and really read the manual and learn it all at once because i don't use a thermal a whole lot to hunt so it would literally take me an entire year to actually learn how to use this image in its entirety Mm-hmm. especially early on before she got way easier like nowadays they're pretty intuitive kind of and by the time i learned it there would be like something way better out i'm just like oh i want this now you start know? over yeah exactly so at least you could have it in your hands i suppose yeah <laughs> but but it still sucks that you bought something yeah exactly you, you made an investment like that and then it's it's now the flip phone of the thermal world right you know and the new model is probably cheaper yeah <laughs> yeah because they seem they seem to get cheaper every year yeah they're just kind of they're cutting each other's throats and, exactly yep yeah that's the big thing when we designed this um we didn't want to have a gen 2 right six months in right so we, we we definitely took our time and that's what we said all along i would hate like hell to sell all these cans to all these guys and while they're sitting in jail we got one that's yeah we relate 20 percent better yeah. you know what i mean it's like so we wanted to make sure we were happy and comfortable that we got right. and, you know we're probably 13 months in now and we still have the quietest that year on the pew science no one's been able to touch it yet so i'm pretty proud of that how yeah. did how did all the pew science stuff work because that's it's funny i heard the same week i heard about you from watching pew science and then uh predator predator hunter local predator hunter and then wade so it was like it's funny to see those two things right. like because i was like it was kind of what that's kind of interesting but how did did you like how did that work? And did you guys see a big bump from that? Um, there was definitely a social media bump. As far as orders go, I'm not sure, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I would say yes, absolutely. Um, Jay is a, Jay's a good dude, and he's got a, he's got a cult following for sure. And there's, there's no been, doubt about that. There's, I would, I would, yeah, I would emphasize cult. We, sp- <laughs> we sponsor him, but <laughs> yeah. But there's guys, there's, there's been, um, it wasn't all at once, though. Since since then, there's been guys that have thanked us. You know, I would say a couple times a month, thanks for uh, trusting Jay, and I'm buying your can because of, you know, um, <laughs> and what he does is, you know, Jay's. I learned a lot with the uh, when we bought the pulse. That was a big investment. Yeah, and uh, we went slightly down that rabbit hole. And uh, what Jay does is a lot different. So right, um, it's a uh, it's a really good program. I think it needs 
some tweaking down the road. Just, Absolutely. Just to offer us suppressor manufacturers uh, some more transparency to be able to tune to that. Right, right. Um, cause we don't really know what we're tuning towards. We're just chasing, uh, peak decibels and yeah. definitely a difference at muzzle and at ear. And we, we strive for the year. So, yeah, I, that's, that's such nerd shit. I don't even care about none of it. They, yeah. I mean, from your perspective, I could definitely see where it could possibly like, it could help you all and everything else like that. But most of the people arguing about Jay's fucking data, <laughs> Don't even shoot goddamn guns. Like, no. just It's all like... Keyboard warriors. Hypothetical. Yes, and it's like, oh, J- actually, uh, they're the a- actually people, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, is it, number one, like we talked about this yesterday, is it accurate? Does it sound good to me? Wait, a I suppressor doesn't it. affect accuracy, Wade. <laughs> oh, contraire. <laughs> we're <laughs> we're going to do more on that this summer, like put out results and everything else, because... That's the first thing I look for. Now, there are times where I'm like, this, it was a particular flow through suppression. You remember what the brand that was? We don't, I didn't, we the didn't keep one? them. Yes. Oh, it's the ones that like nobody wants. Um, Hex. Hex works. No, no. no. This, this, is, this is a. Are they even around anymore? Probably not. It was a. Probably Hex, early. Hex 3D. Early gen flow through design. Probably. Okay. They were so fucking loud. It was like having a uh, goddamn ported muzzle device on your rifle. And I'm just like, I don't give a shit if this shoots good on every single rifle I own. I refuse to use this fucking thing. It was that horrible. It, yeah, I'd rather deal with a dirty magazine in my AR than the big Exactly. Uh, but that's where I go first. Anytime I get new suppressors, I go straight to, I go straight to certain rifles that I know they perform flawless, whatever the suppressor is generally. Like, it's a, a standard. I don't take a new rifle out of the box and try to proof a suppressor that way because it's stupid. And then I'll go I'll go to shooting groups and everything. And uh, you, I'm probably, like, more concerned about it than most people. I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know how the rest of people really feel about the situation. I know the, the Mag Dumps and the Barms guys really don't care. They just, meh. Uh, you know, flannel daddy says it's good, so it's good. But that's my first stop. Is like, does this thing this thing shoot good on these proven rifles, proven ammo? And if it does that, then I'll start really listening and shooting a lot more. And diligent does it for me. I mean, they uh, across like I was telling you yesterday, across the board, I all of my diligent cans print fantastic groups on no matter what the rifle, whatever you know. It's in it's some rifles. Especially, it seems as if ARs. I don't want. I'm kind of speaking in generality because I haven't collected all the data and looked it over really tightly to say, to make bold claims. But it seems like on to me on AR suppressors generally help the accuracy as long as it's a good suppressor. I mean, there are some that I could show you that are awful, but right. Generally speaking, they are uh, improve the accuracy of the platform. Now, an argument could be made that maybe you shoot it better because you're not. You know, because you're shooting a fucking loud gun and you're, you can't stop the flinch that happens with the boom, even with the ear pro and shit, because and you're not running the recoil. They definitely. Oh, God. Oh, God. This I was is... getting to that. I was okay. getting to that. Yeah, we need, I need that on camera. <laughs> Actually, no, you said, because I don't remember exactly. Okay, well, here's the deal. Oh, you know, obviously, because the, you know, any suppressor is going to add some amount of weight. And if you look at like a lot of the stuff that Litz has done. You know that weight is important for the you know bore not to shift before like before the bullet actually exits the uh, the barrel. But this is internet <laughs> internet sycophants um, got an argument that all suppressors add recoil. And I was just I was trying to go through this. I'm like, wait, are you trying to say because if you like, obviously like these ridiculous three port muzzle brakes, everybody's running like on PRS rigs. This is from a PRS guy. Um, those are obviously going to cut recoil out better than most suppressors. So like maybe potentially you're adding recoil by not having that, but over bare muzzle. And then he was like, no bare muzzle. Like they increase recoil. No, that's absolutely wrong. A muzzle break. A What's his good, name? A, Can you look at a camera and say it? <laughs> no, a good muzzle break does reduce recoil better than a suppressor. Yeah. I've seen multiple videos yeah. tested it myself, not scientifically, but right you know? it's pretty obvious and uh but i've watched some videos of guys you know they're they're setting off a trigger 
with a string or whatever, mm-hmm. and they got a weighted sled and a scale, and they're yeah, actually uh, measuring the recoil. Yes, but over bare muzzle, one hundred percent, you're uh, reducing recoil. I just don't like. I couldn't. I couldn't understand what the hell he was saying. He's like, yeah, suppressors add recoil. Is it because of the? Yeah, it was. Can like, you explain this to me, guy we were, we, on the we, internet. We were. We, we, this was a very like long, in depth, like yes. multi multi paragraph back and forth argument. And uh, yeah, I don't. It was, you guys are better than me. I just smile and say, okay. Well, here's what <laughs> actually happens. Generally, my go. Wade goes, and then if it's somebody who's just like really persistent, because there's some people out there who just they want. They want to argue. They want to argue. And I, here's the thing: I love to argue. So he just. I tag him in. He'll, he'll he'll say hey go on this account shoot him a text a screenshot and say go, I, go get him i usually i like to like i like to stir the pot a little bit sometimes but i won't argue with people i'm just like eh, whatever well if somebody's in the comment section and they're spreading like like misinformation right right you know that's a different because especially because you would put out it was an informative video that you were trying to explain to people something and he came on there and was challenging that and it's uh, like actually yeah um, actually uh and so we were you know I don't want somebody in the comments to read that. And then if like, we just don't respond, then go, well, maybe right. this guy's right. Right. You know? Yeah. It's a, it's a delicate process. Anybody can shoot. If you, sh- if you shoot a suppressed rifle, it obviously has less recoil. Like you don't need, I don't need science to tell me, but we went into science. Right. Use that with, but you yeah. start ridiculous. talking you're, about momentum and you're slowing down the gas inertia and, yeah. and you're adding a little weight out front. I don't, anyway, I, was, I didn't even understand stupid. where it's coming from. I don't know. What you're getting at though is you don't, and I think this comes back to, again, we are also, we we are also in a privileged position and spoiled where we can get whatever we want. So when we look at a suppressor, we're looking at like, I mean, I know me personally, it's like form factor is like the number one important because it's like what suppressor is going on this gun and the form factor around that versus people who get really twerked off in the data, like they're looking at it as a long term investment. Like I'm buying the suppressor, you know, I'm gonna go. I want the best, so I'm going to go dig through all the Pew Research data and because I have to have the best. And then some of those guys take it a little far because like, oh, I have to go challenge everybody on the internet that isn't the best. Right. <laughs> or God right. forbid you open a suppressor or start a suppressor company and don't don't pay Jay to do your thing. I've seen them mob some people on that. That's which... what I am not a fan of. You're going to wait. You're going to have shitty fans one day. You know that, right? I know. Where it's going gonna, to happen. Have some. That's true. <laughs> That's what I'm not a fan of. And maybe it's changed because I just, I don't keep up with that shit because I don't care. Uh, his pricing structure stuff in the beginning, I, I just, I don't know. It's, it all seemed a little, little weird. There's just too much in group circle jerking with a certain subset of the um, crowd of, uh, just on the internet, on Instagram in general. It's not even specific to him, right? It's all these people who, Right. It's more about like my identity. He's like, I own, I'm, I own this product and I have to go around right. attacking people who own it. And he's just product. giving them fuel. I don't think he realizes he's doing it either. Yeah. Either or he does. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so, I, um, I can't say anything bad about him. He's done nothing but help us. Um, like I said, I, I don't blame him for the way he does something, but I would like there to be differences, you know. Right. He's invested a lot of time and a lot of money into it. Well, it's um, worked for him really well. Well, and I mean, I wish that we could all have a um a standard a transparent method that we can all right pissing contest with each other and yeah you can send this can and this cartridge on this host and get duplicate results and i would like to see that one day but where we stand now that's definitely the best we got right um because right now you just got suppressor manufacturers just advertising complete bullshit right oh yeah i mean it's it was same way with uh when Predator hunting industry took off and the lights come out of nowhere. It was all Chinese shit, but they were all like, it was all these uh, meter wars. Yeah. And it was, and then it was like, wait, how did you use the meter? And it come to find out like most of the people were advertising horse shit data. And I'm <laughs> sure it's the same thing on suppressors. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, so in Jay's testing, does he do is as far as like the data, like y'all get from him is actually even a part of that could you elaborate a little bit like, like does it well you're probably meaning precision first of all i guess technically, right technically uh, um 
Like, but, is, that, is that even considered? Like, a why? Why? Like I guess, for, you know, would be precision, like group size yeah. or uh, point of impact shift. Right. Is, so, that, is that even part of his, his little... No, 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 no. He does nothing with precision. It's all sound. Yeah. It's a composite, a composite sound rating. And if you want to go down that road, I think there's a sniper's high. It's probably the best one. And uh, you start talking about accuracy. It's Thunder Beast, Thunder Beast, Thunder Beast. And I can tell you firsthand, those are the straightest cans made. Really? Um, I don't, I don't personally believe that, uh, that's all that goes into it. Um, we have no. a generous bore and I think, um, if you have a super tight bore, absolutely. You need a super straight can. Right. Um, I've found that the generous there's, there's benefits to having a generous bore, um, for the gas guys. I think it's a little less gassy, um, and for accuracy and, uh, our baffles are, super efficient and we didn't notice a whole lot of gains by making the bore smaller so there was no reason you know right um yeah thunder beast cans are definitely straighter than ours. i don't know i mean the bad thing about having real small holes is uh i have seen it i'm sh i'm sure if y'all haven't seen it yet you're going to like someone do a hack ass job of threading yeah. the barrel someone's uncle's got a lathe in their garage and he's gonna thread that thing and he's gonna just choke up on the od and yeah. it's not gonna be concentric and you're gonna get a baffle strike so yeah. maybe we'll be saved from that <gasps> probably i mean i've seen several baffle strikes uh over the years like and it's typically it's typically like the same scenario like oh i got you know Uncle Mike's got a, he's a lathe and he threaded my shit and oh there's a hole outside him again. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah, we need that or your your can walks off, you know. Yeah, can come yeah, that too. Time. I've seen that shit. Uh if you if you shoot suppressed long enough, <sighs> you're gonna get some baffle strikes. Yeah. And then you get jacket separations. I've seen yeah. And for the few cans that are out there of ours, I've seen a handful now. I uh I myself <laughs> you personally which one of the cans was that? Oh, it was a thunder chicken. You put the wrong mount on. So I I got a uh, custom 6.5 PRC with a thin profile barrel. Not even thinking about it. Uh, I screwed on one of Q's, the, the plan B, half by 28. Has a taper. And uh, the inside diameter is not 308 because <laughs> it's half by 28. Uh, <laughs> so inside inside the uh, plan B, I got what you're saying. I I just assumed it was going to be. I don't know why I assumed that. I just assumed it was going to be 30 cal across the board on the internal diameter of the uh, of, of the that plan B. Muzzle, the, uh, device. Yes, yeah. the end of the muzzle device. No, the half by 28 is not 30 cal. It's not even 6.5 cal. It's, it's 0.224, probably six millimeter. I'd imagine. Yeah. Cause I screwed that bad boy on that little thin profile hunt barrel, put my thunder chicken on, sent one down range and, uh, and blew the yeah, side out. <laughs> turns out the muzzle device is completely fine. I mean, it's, what is that? Stainless 17, four stainless. It literally stripped the jacket off the projectile. <laughs> now the lead just kept going, but it, when it stripped the jacket off, it opened the lead up in the suppressor. <laughs> Did it blow the yeah, end it, off? I don't even remember no, now. Oh yeah. The end blew off. Yeah, like but I felt like a total asshole and a retard. But they fixed I mean, it. You were. <laughs> they fixed well, it. Well, that's what like there come. There's so many more metrics to a company than than just the or to a suppressor than just the raw sound performance. You have things like you know the, how how good is the company's you know customer service. Yes, because this is something you're gonna you know form form forward to yourself. You're gonna have the rest of your life, and you know how good's that aspect. How good's their. Uh, you know, again, form factor, weight, you guys talked about earlier. It's not just raw sound performance, I think. Although that is important, right? You buy a suppressor because you want right. to buy it. Right. But you can't overemphasize that and underemphasize, you know, mounting systems or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Weight, size, sound. Yeah. And then you have the service, customer service, relations. Just um, as far as Q goes, I've had great luck with them. I put a six Creedmoor barrel on my 6.5 fix and launched the uh, bolt retaining spring in the outer space <laughs> and uh they didn't even ask a question they just sent me a new one in the mail it's it good just uh, that's how you want them to be that's that's been mine we i broke some stuff on on, on so i've we've had uh fixes since like, i think my serial number is like 63 the, one of the first ones i uh, uh we've broke a um, few of the stock butt pads okay and then something i forgot not the butt pad but the plastic piece and some other stuff I broke over the time, and like they just don't even reply, reply to the thing. They just send send a new one in the mail. Yeah. I'm like, so that's been pretty nice. 
We've had, I mean, they didn't. And then, yeah, the they pressure. can. That was we got it back pretty quick too. Yes. I'm surprised at that. Quick yeah. turnaround, which I mean, it was a pretty easy fix. I figure for them, anyways. Just cut the end off and weld a new end on it. Essentially, yeah. Because that was the only thing it messed up. Luckily, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't mess up the serialized component. Yeah. So as far as I, I wanted to make sure to get to this because it's important in my opinion. The uh, what do y'all call this in? The in the form one world, it was always called ASR threads. Silencer Co. was the first one that started the engine three eighths twenty four. So so most they called it ASR, but now it's called hub is what I'm hearing it called the hub <laughs> hub hub mounting. So, so this is the the correct whatever I don't even know how to pronounce like say this. This is the thread size that most people do the aftermarket shit for. Not even aftermarket, just I think I think today if you're making a suppressor without the hub threads, you're 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 wrong. Right. <laughs> like Well, that's the way I look at it. So, so y'all basically send them direct thread. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we sell the enticer series with a five H twenty four. The wolf hunters for the moment come with a half twenty eight and a five H twenty four just to right. cover cover both sides. Right. And uh, for the people that are running these uh, quick, t- I don't even know if you'd call it quick detach, like any other, most of your other attachment devices will thread into the suppressor. Yes, one way or another. So the Q, uh, he come up with the plan B and the cherry bomb. Mm-hmm. Um, the taper that he uses on the inside has become, there's a lot of spinoffs of that. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, guys like to be able to rock set the plan B yeah in the back of all their cans and then rock set the cherry bombs on all their rifles and uh personally i think you should have a suppressor for every gun definitely and yeah. uh <laughs> that's the lightest method that you're holding right there yeah. oh yeah that's a what, titanium that's direct thread and uh, that's what i chase is weight and length and so my personal favorite is the air 419 i don't remember if it's hellfire, hellfire. Is hellfire. It hellfire? yeah it is you can get them in titanium it's a uh, very lightweight system, and it's reverse thread. I, was, I hate that reverse thread. I like it. <laughs> it. It trips me out every time I go to do it. I guess I'm just so used to it. Because it's you're wrong. It's just your left. Yeah. <laughs> but then you tighten it down, and then the other mount comes loose. Well, you just... Uh, the the muzzle device, if you will, I always... And this is, is going to spit us into my next question that oh, I was going to ask you. <laughs> you better not say it. I'm going to fucking say you're it. You're wrong. I use nope. for my muzzle device and this these suppressors because uh, now I've gotten enough of the ones I like to hunt with. I just I've started leaving them on instead of swapping them all the time. I use permanent Loctite because I don't want to have to deal with Which color. Which color? Say it. Red. Okay. Red's permanent. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to have to do deal with rock set because I may change my mind a week from now. You may come out with a new can. I'm like, fuck that can. I got to put the new one on my gun. So I don't want nothing permanent, but it's just enough to keep it on there. I'm not mag dumping in the barbs. I'm hunting. Sometimes I will shoot a lot, but I don't go swapping the suppressor. So it, it works great for me. Which one do you recommend? I recommend whatever you're comfortable with and like. <laughs> uh, first off, red Loctite can be broke with heat. Yes. Yes. So if you're mag dumping, I think you might be better with rock set still. Probably. Um, I am one of them people that hit the lock button 12 times on my car. Make sure it's locked. So anytime I touch a rifle, the first thing I do is grab yeah, the can and tighten. Yeah. And I tighten the can. And that's why I don't like the Area 419 because I don't right. rock set anything. So then I yeah. turn it and then I yeah. loosened it. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Now I got to tighten that one tighter than I decide to. Because you can get a fair amount of torque by hand yeah. on just grabbing a can. Yeah. Um, so that's just what I do, but it's with its preference. Right. And I always tell the people that, that are, are looking for that easy, changeable system. And a lot of guys that are looking for that are guys who also travel to other states to hunt and they can't run a suppressor. That's why I always push them towards the Air 419 stuff. Because you got the uh, the brakes that are really good if you're going to run a brake. Uh, they got their blast forwarding device that's actually really good. And then they you know it can totally go into your suppressor. Uh, I just, for, for long, for, I've never used rock set on nothing. Like I've always used, uh, red lock on suppressor parts because at the end of the day, I'm not mag dumping in the barbs. 
I put it on there and I never have any issues with it. And that's also why I like the uh, reverse thread myself. Yeah. Because my, my muzzle device will be red Loctite on. And then uh, I go ahead and red Loctite these. It, the reason why I like it is because if I need to break it off, it's a pretty easy process. I don't have to go bolt yeah. water. Yeah, I've heard the theory that um, the harmonics on a barrel ripping and it actually tightens the suppressor uh, by having a reverse thread. But like I said, my... I just always check. I always grab a hold. You know, of it. it's one just... time, and I don't know. I'll probably play with it some more this summer because I want to get into like, I want to detail test this, the red Loctite and everything else. Well, the, the argument is that red and blue Loctite. The difference is the amount of torque applied, right, to to remove it, not necessarily the temperature range. So both of them are defeated at a fairly low temperature. If you shoot, I mean, again, again, shooting a bolt gun. It, it, doesn't it matter. probably doesn't matter, but it's still not right. I just rock, just rock set it. Put your <laughs> water on the board. Stupid. It's correct. No, it's correct for the application. I've actually used crush washers before on direct thread cans and had no issues. Now, I was super nervous. I kept, you know, putting. Well, the you, old, I think you won't have an issue on that until you do have an issue. <laughs> I kept putting the bore rod down, <laughs> looking down the barrel because I was nervous about it canting it slightly. But I just kept checking it, kept checking, it, and I put that bitch so tight on there it was basically crushed completely. Right worked but i'm not gonna put that recommendation out there <laughs> to, for other people to do it yeah but it, it, it kept it from backing off essentially but yeah it's just, just became one of time. my one of my habits you know looking down to see if there's something in the chamber and yes i always when i'm walking i just always grab it and yeah. i don't think about it it's just second nature so what's your what's your favorite non-direct thread mount he said nothing buy more suppressors Buy more suppressors. <laughs> I, I agree with that. Man. I would sense. probably say I like the Cherry Bomb and the, um, the Plan B. Pretty good best. system, but as far as carbon locking on. They all do it. They all do it, but the best one I've ever seen is the Area 419. I've never had one issue spinning the can off. Really? I've locked my Cherry Bombs on. Now we're talking about extended use without cleaning. Yeah. Uh, so what I don't like about the... I, I hate 17.4 as far as 17.4 on 17.4. Um, those threads, they're dry. No, mm-hmm. no, no anti-seize or something. They gall like immediately. And, right. um, I could see, uh, if your can did come loose and you got a little carbon in there and you, as soon as you pick up a, it's stuck on there forever. For most people's application, the, I, I, I like the design of the plan B better than i do the muzzle device on the air 419 but there i get why they do the mm-hmm. way they do because they have all their other aftermarket muzzle devices but the fact that you can spin your can off and you already have a break in your muzzle device works really good for those people that need that situation right hunt elsewhere and everything else my the biggest thing i get though is like these guys who i'll recommend either plan b or whatever the air 419 stuff and when they have suppressors, and they can't hunt with them everywhere. The biggest question I get is like, why can I uh, hold zero when my suppressor's on in this break? And I'm like, you don't understand how things work, do you? Are y'all ever going to try and mess with any muzzle devices? Or y'all Absolutely. Always- and it's just been um, a capacity issue. Right. We've got tons modeled up. Um, really good friend of ours, Reardon. Uh, manufacturing if you heard of them but they're making they're using the q profile threads tapers oh yeah yeah follow them yeah it's all interchangeable darren's great guy good friend and uh he offers everything that's needed right now um and we can't stay caught up with suppressors right but now i would love to dabble in a lot of different things yeah um muzzle devices i want to do optic mounts eventually one day that'd be pretty sweet yeah um i think there's I've got Bobro, which is an amazing mount, a QD mount, and the American Defense. I've got probably a half a dozen of those. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's somewhere in between on those. There's a market for. Are you talking about? Are you talking about specifically uh, QD stuff? Stuff that I use for the thermals that irritates me to buy. Right. And I'd like to improve on. You know? Yeah. Um, the there's Bo- always room for improvement on just about everything. It yeah. just takes people who. We were probably sick in the head to think about this shit all the time. Like, well, I could make this better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as performance, that Bobro mount is just stupid awesome. That's what I hear. Um, 
the the price is my only complaint and there's a lot of work involved in it so yeah it shouldn't be but uh when i want to put it on all my optics it it's a kick you know yeah um but the american defense what i've noticed is when you draw it up if you so my thermal has five profile settings you could put it on five different hosts mm -hmm. um Unless you have two Q fixes, your Picatinny rails have different dimensions yeah, yeah. and you have different tensions. Then you go and adjust that for my 22 long rifle to shoot coons in the yard, uh, go to put it back on my fix. As soon as yeah. I change that, I, I've lost my zero yeah. and it changes fairly significantly. Yeah. Uh, the Bobro has springs in it and uh, basically it self adjust essentially. Self adjust, yeah. Yeah, if you have, I mean, I'm sure there's specs on what's allowed on a, a Picatinny rail, you know, and yeah. you have tolerances and it hits all of them just fine and it that's, repeats. That's always been, most of my stuff that I have that's QD is American Defense. That's always been my complaint is that repeatability because there's so many different, I guess, tolerances allowed and all right. that other shit. And you're, you know, push the little thing in, adjust it. And when you try to put it back on, it's never correct uh yeah it's hillbilly shit but my workaround <laughs> for it is uh i put tape on my 22 long rifle yeah <laughs> and that way it happens to be smaller than my uh fixed guns so if it works it works and uh <laughs> it still holds zero and i, I mean, can still what, shoot the coons and uh, you know when i'm close to the houses and stuff you don't need a whole lot of re recalls not a big issue on a 22 <laughs> yeah yeah there's no and that that was my workaround without having to buy another 400 hundred dollar mount yeah so are y'all going to come out with a 22 long rifle suppressor? We have, uh, we have the thread adapter made and we've got the tubes made. Um, we've got multiple baffle designs and, uh, I just can't with a good conscience put any time towards it cause we're behind right. orders for the enticers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, uh, it's something that's, uh, it's coming. We're about eight months behind and, uh, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel when we're going to actually get it done. Right. A um, couple cool things we did do, though. Our thread adapter is interchangeable with the mask. Yeah. And uh, we have an accessory that basically does the same thing as, uh, what the hell's the dead air? Um, I don't remember what it's called. They have a, basically, you can put the uh, chemo, and it's a, a flash suppressor, and then you can put the end caps on. Oh, yeah, the... Uh what do they call that? They Pro call it e-brake. No, 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 not the e-brake. Oh, there's pyro. A, pyro, yes. Yeah. So we have a, and there's a, there's a loophole reason for the pyro to exist. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, for the, from what I understood at the time, and this is why Silence Co and Dead and everybody else was doing it, is because then you could get, uh, that's how they were able to sell like mounts and flat end caps without ATF exactly. regulation. Yeah. Yep. Any part of a suppressor is a suppressor, so you can't sell direct thread adapters for a suppressor because it's a suppressor so dead air was like they were smart enough to say hey um here's the what you say it's called the pyro it's a cheap piece that these happen to thread into also and our flash caps thread into them so now we're able to sell these ah. yeah. oh we just happened to use the same part on a suppressor because yeah. it was funny because silence ago came out with uh they had a bravo mount one that was like you could never get it but they had it like on their web store and i'm assuming for the same reason yeah, so I talked to an ATF agent, and I said, how, if any part of suppressor, how come we can go on the silencer shop and buy all these mounts and end caps? He's like, I have no clue. Um, That's about how it goes a store, with ATF. A gentleman at a store, I told him that I was going to make our thread adapters interchangeable with the mask because they're titanium, and the mask ones are 17.4. I was telling you about that last night. Um and just to save weight and uh yeah. they thread smoother they're you know 17.4 can be rough on barrel threads and uh if something's not clean yeah. and uh i told this guy about that he's like that's illegal and he said there's no other device that you know i was like okay that's an easy fix we'll yeah, right. yeah we'll make something but again yeah. that's all just 22 long rifle muzzle break until we get our lead times down from eight weeks i'm not going to uh right spend any effort on that right. stuff as far as uh, I just went blank. Oh, as far as those blast forwarding devices or the pyro or the what was the Novesky, the flaming pig or some shit. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff. This is what I tell people all the time. If you are hunting with other people, 
don't run a break. Run one of those fucking things. If you're waiting on your suppressor, first of all, go buy a goddamn suppressor. Right. Secondly, if you're hunting those blast forwarding devices, it's way better than a break as, in a, as it pertains to a hunting situation, especially to your friends. Because if you shoot a break very long, you're not going to have friends very long. Yeah. Is what I say. Or friends that can hear you. It's, it's exactly. funny because the original Noveski KX3 basically inspired from like a crank break but the reason they were using those at the time is the tin fives were notoriously unreliable so it actually increases back pressure yeah and so the whole reason for the kx the uh, kx3 at the time was to uh basically make your gun cycle better it's interesting fun, fun fact huh. so have y'all done uh, as far as like extensive testing goes on ar platforms if I have a 16-inch 223, what suppressor would you recommend for that? For a predator hunting? Yeah. I would say right. the STI all day long. Um, I don't ever run the long ones. It just gives you more issues to deal with on the backside. Right. Um, you can save your ears a lot with an adjustable gas block and uh, tweaking the buffer. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, the shorter can just because I like short and you're not, you know what I mean? You go right. longer on the front and you're dealing with more blowback and more, more action noise. Yeah. Um, I just think that it's probably a wash, you know what I mean? Right. So I just recommend the short one. It's cheaper. It's got less, you know, less smoke in your face. And I, th- I also think I, I run into this a lot with people question us. When you screw a suppressor on AR-15... You need to increase your cleaning regimen. And I can't stress this enough because especially in areas, and I don't know how the temperature is, climate is where y'all live in areas that it seems to me areas that are higher, uh, humidity than Mm -hmm. we're low humidity as shit out here. Areas that are higher humidity. It's even worse. Yeah. The best, in my opinion, the best thing you can do is once you shoot your last shot, pull the round out. Don't leave that bitch in there. Because and may, maybe you can explain this better. Like when you shoot that last shot on Express AR-15 platform, what happens to why is it? And it's why is it? I don't know if it it seems as if it's more of an issue in higher humidity areas. Why is it that it's just so much shit in there after that last shot? Is it because you've stopped the system? It's it's all hot as shit, and it cool, condenses back I down. I was getting ready to say my best guess is the uh, hot and cold cycle is causing condensation. Um, you get the soot, and then you get the soot wet, and then um, I believe the soot is, is even acidic maybe. You know what I yes, mean? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, because, I mean, you, you when see you what leave does those, to the casings. When you leave those rounds in there. Yeah, you can put those bitches in your tumbler for four days, and they still look like. <laughs> pop it out. It's tarnished. I yeah. mean. Yeah. And it, I tell people this all the time. Like when you go suppress on AR-15, just go ahead and plan on cleaning that bitch way more. Cause it's literally, especially, I mean, well, the difference is like piston driven. It's way less dirty, but direct impact. It's literally feeding off of that shit. It's like, it's blowing that shit in there and uh, you're, you're creating back pressure and everything else. Right. And it's, you're just going to have to clean your shit more. Like I, I get this all the time from people who are just, just got their suppressor out, put on their AR. One, they've they're running typically running like cheap horny, and it's you know, yeah, you know that whole thing. And I'm like, well, buy some better ammo first of all. Two, adjust your shit to where it's not as gassy. But three, the more the longer you go without cleaning, the more the shit packs up in there, and that's just more shit that'll come out as you're shooting. Yeah. So just when you go suppressed, be better about cleaning your firearm. Another big one is, and I learned this, uh, unfortunately, firsthand. I ran the six arc predator hunting for, I don't know, six months. Unfortunately, I didn't get to empty mags on coyotes. You know, you shoot it, you shoot two, three rounds, put two, three rounds on top, shoot two, three rounds, but two, those bottom rounds wouldn't even cycle <laughs> by the time yeah. I got to them. Yeah. They were just tarnished, yes. covered in, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, soot and water. And like you said, it was just filthy. Mm-hmm. And they those bottom rounds wouldn't even cycle. So so what what I typically do for, because of we've I've really leaned into the AR stuff, because I, I want to, one, 6R, uh, Valkyrie kind of revived my interest in the AR platform and then swapping from a shotgun to a semi-auto short-barreled platform for close quarters calling 
revived my love for the AR platform. And then six arc, it was just kind of pushing it on there. You know, I'm like, Oh, I guess I'm shooting ARs more now. So I'm, I'm, uh, I like shit to function properly. I hate cleaning rifles just like everyone else. But I noticed on my AR platforms, if I will do every time I hunt with it, if I shoot one round or 20 rounds, 40, whatever the case may be, at the end of the day, I pull the boat care group, charge handle, clean them off, wipe down the inside and the magazine well, everything really good. And then I'll take a Q-tip and I'll push it in there through the chamber and clean out the, uh, basically where the, free bore starts just go ahead and clean it out with a little they you can get these long q-tips are really meant for cleaning pistols but can't remember ramrods or some shit like that keep that area clean because what ha- what's undoubtedly going to happen that's just going to get dirty every time you shoot it's the chamber itself it's fine getting dirty like they're they're way looser tolerances than a, say a boat gun for that reason because it's a it's a moving device mechanical so it getting dirty is going to be fine to a certain extent. But what undoubtedly is going to happen is you're going to get so much of that shit in there. You're going to, this extreme heating and cooling happening. It's just gunking everything up all the time. What's going to happen. And I, I see this a lot in guys that are new to the game. They don't understand what's going on. A lot of your ARs, almost all of them, when you pull you grip it and rip it, you know, when that round loads, the projectile comes out a little bit and what, what no doubt is going to happen, especially when you're shooting suppress and it's you know way more dirty is you're taking up that tolerance with gunk and shit like that. Okay. So you're, you're making essentially making your chamber free bore, everything tighter and it's going to happen. You're going to load it. It's going to come out just a little bit, the projectile and it's going to get stuck. And there's nothing wrong with your shit. It's just you have to maintenance that firearm when you run suppress way more often than you did before running suppress. And it's, and that, you know, when it happens to people that aren't familiar with what's going on the first time, they kind of freaks out like, what the fuck? Just, you know, yeah. powder generally goes everywhere. Like the best you can hope for is you did it so fast that it kicks that bitch out and powder just don't get dumped all over everything and you shut you down all night. Cause all you literally do is if you have a little cleaning kit, push the projectile out now you should probably go ahead and clean your shit but me i've been on hunts i'm just like <laughs> and shove that bitch in there yeah but i mean funny you say that i so i clicked at two coyotes my gun was filthy i was blaming primers blaming ammo you then you would see it didn't even strike the primer uh have to use forward assist mm-hmm. it's just because i don't believe in cleaning stuff <laughs> and uh I was blaming, you know, the hand loads, whatever. So, and then once I found out how good it feels to shoot a runner with a bolt gun, it's like a drug. Yeah. I just have found that I prefer the bolt guns. Yeah. It's just this year, anyways. They definitely go back. They require more maintenance, suppress any firearm, but it's way less on a bolt gun as an AR. Yeah. Because you're not, I mean, AR, direct pigeon AR is literally fitting the filth back into it. And you just, you have to get more regimented if you're going to run that shit. I mean, cause if undoubtedly, if you don't, you're going to run into clicks in the field or shit's going to go wrong. Like you're, you're, so what I did on my six arc here recently, I was like, I'm going to do this bare bones maintenance routine, but I'm not going to clean this bitch until I absolutely have to. And I think, I think I was telling you last night, I think I'm right around a thousand rounds without a good barrel cleaning. And that's literally what happened. Uh, I'm going to say like several rounds ago i was using four to six to even load the shit and i'm like it's gonna go it's gonna come i'm gonna have to like get a bullet unjammed out of this bitch and sure enough uh it got so sooted up in the chamber everything else that the projectile wouldn't like again when you slam that forward the project all i don't care if it's crimped or not all projectiles seat forward just a little bit and that's probably part of the reason why some AR shoots so damn good. You're literally jamming the lens with a projectile. Yeah, like at a pressure spike, but it shoots really well. Yep. So, and literally while I was shooting, it happened. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's time to clean this bitch. Like it's, we're getting dangerously too dirty here. But again, bolt guns, 
They're obviously more superior to AR-15s. I agree with you. They're way more satisfying to shoot. I don't know. When the ARs work smooth, uh, there's nothing. I mean, yeah. it's, it's also fun shooting at runners yeah. or multiple groups. And uh, I just find that uh, my hunting comes last. Work is always first. And if I do go hunting, it's kids go to bed. And yeah. I realize out. I go outside to pee and hear coyotes howling. And it's like, oh, man, I got to go. Yeah. And yeah. then I come in, need to get to bed. I just throw the shit in the closet and repeat. Yeah. And then I find that I've went out. 15 times and haven't cleaned nothing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. yeah it's called hunting for a reason yeah so as far as the suppressors go if someone listening wants to get one what is the process like n- don't not the whole paperwork thing but can they get on your website order one and get it shipped to their local ffl we always recommend uh people use an existing dealer Yes. We have a map on our website where you can um, click around and uh, see who's closest to you. Uh, If you're a guy that doesn't have anything within three hours and your buddy down the street has his own SOT or there's the local pawn shop, whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Reach out to us and uh, we can send it to you. But we always recommend first that you um, go to a dealer. Yeah, uh, already existing dealer. And And if you're, you know... If you're in a town that has a gun store that they don't, maybe they hadn't even heard of diligent before or whatever, go hound your local gun store. Yeah, we have <laughs> uh, next to zero dealer requirements. Right. Um, as time goes on, that's probably going to change. Right. Well, it's going to have to at some point. And, uh, but right now we have, yeah, we have next to no requirements. Um, any dealer can jump on the website, sign up to be a dealer, send us your FFL SOT and, uh, We'll talk from there. Yeah. Uh, what's y'all's website? Well, the website, I'm assuming, has all the information about each individual suppressor, specs, specs all that stuff. weights, price, MSRP, which is diligentdefense.com. You can go in there, and uh, we have some accessories you can buy. Uh, we have a whole different tab for swag, shirts, hats. Um, you have any hoodies? Not yet. When, as soon as you'll get some, let me know, because apparently I wear the same hoodie all the time. Yes, he does. <laughs> It'll be it'll be on like at least five podcasts. Yeah, I was gonna say just be aware. I'm gonna you're gonna see it a lot once I do get one. But I, I only have a few hoodies I like to wear, so that's what I wear all the time. No, invariably because he matches his hats to his outfits, so he winds up wearing the same thing. Men don't wear outfits. Go ahead. You you have outfits. Sorry, that's what they are. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you. I'm a flannel guy. A flannel and a t-shirt. I, I can see that being from PA. Yeah. And, uh, I just, in my mind, everyone from PA likes to wear flannel. I don't know why. Everyone wears flannel and nobody knows that suppressors are legal in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Newsflash anyone who's listening. These are completely legal to own. Yeah. It's just uh, some annoying ass paperwork you got to do. Yep. And patience are required also. Yes. Yes. Uh, is there anything else we should cover? There's one really important announcement. Go fuck yourself. Uh, everybody listening to the podcast right now. Today is Wade Chandler's birthday. You're going to be hearing this two days late. Uh, he hates celebrating his birthday, so everybody wish him a happy birthday in the <laughs> comment section. Uh, I've been waiting for like three hours to do this. So. <laughs> he always he tries to sneak it by us. Like I don't, like everybody. He, I he I usually go out of town because I don't want to hear it. Yeah, that's good. Well, so now it's birthday, enshrined Wade. on the internet. You're 50 now. Yeah, how old damn. Are you? Were you like 86? <laughs> Uh, Brooke says I'm, uh, 39, 39 today. Yeah. We talked about this last night. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause we're 10 years apart. I forget. God, you're such a baby. Where you little lad? Uh, that's, I mean, that's it. So everybody wish, wish way to happy birthday. Diligent defense. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, one L not two. I always fuck that up. I do too. It's right there on his shirt. Yeah. Diligent yeah. defense. Go check them out. Buy a, buy a suppressor uh, at the end of the day. What are you uh, going to spend that? What are you going to spend that $500 on? Yeah, Come on. Don't drink for a weekend. I always recommend if you're hunting, go with the titanium. I just, uh, if you're going to wait, if you're going to give Uncle Sam 200 bucks and wait maybe a year, right. drag your feet for a few months and scratch up an up, you know, yeah. a couple hundred extra bucks. It's, 750. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, that's a, that's a thousand, that's a thousand bucks with a tax stamp. You just got your tax return. So go out and buy it. It's yeah. people. 
it's literally going to last your lifetime unless you do something stupid and blow it apart. Yeah. If you love mag dumping and you're more into the tactical stuff, by all means. Well, they're not going to shoot. You know, they never shoot. So I mean, titanium cans will hold up like, to an extent, obviously. Like, I, I've... Because I've done that just to people like, titanium kids, you can't even shoot. And it's like, I put one on a full auto 416. And just... Yes, absolutely they do. I have a guy that guides pig hunts uh, East Texas. And um, he's, I don't know what he told me. He's scratching 20,000 rounds through his. And it looks like the day he got it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, he takes it out a couple nights a week. And uh, does let guys, you know, torture test, mag dump. And it's, it's good. Yeah, people think. I think it's. I think we're better now in the industry, but for a long time, people will just assume like titanium means it's gonna. Oh, you can't. Like, Titanium's wicked shit until you get it hot. Once so you get it like hot, it's when or so nine hundred degrees. It'll 900 degrees. start doing the uh, hydrogen and brittlement. Um, it'll start taking in uh, hydrogen, and uh, it starts the erosion. It can really crank up right. once you get it hot. And uh, but if you're just shooting, you know, best case. A mag, you know what I mean. You're you're, right. you're not hurting it. Right. You know you're shooting a ten round mag at a group of pigs or something, or a twenty round mag. At, you're not hurting nothing. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good place to end it. Don't you a, think? We have a birthday party to get to. No, yeah. we don't. Better not. <laughs> Dairy Queen cake. <laughs> I was thinking about trying to figure out how to ambush you at, at yeah. Ally today with everybody, but it, I'll drive by and throw the. Luckily for out. you, I was really busy this weekend, and I'm a good. procrastinator. So. Need to take good. him to uh, Texas Roadhouse and sneak off to the bathroom and tell the waitress <laughs> it's his birthday. And Not happening. Make he, him sit on the. Le- legitimately, he would walk out. <laughs> I would. <laughs> With the big stupid hat. I would not partake in any of those activities. Birthdays are stupid. Wade hates everything <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> that's not true. I love shooting and killing things. How do you feel about Legos? Are you a Lego guy? <laughs> Is this about my laser? No, no, no. Just you're an engineer. I just figured you don't, probably grew up playing Don't buy into this. So... Legos are actually like uh, engineering marvel if you're into tolerances and precision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, the t- it's the secrets, the tubes, Wayne. As far as uh, snapping and the interference fit goes, they're doing a lot of cool things there. But we used to get picked on a lot. Our, uh, we have a China laser engraver because we're just normal dudes. Oh, do you use Legos for your fixturing? We did. Yeah, hell we, yeah. We 3D printed all of our fixtures now. But yeah, we would have some... Uh, Instagram videos and we got rode pretty hard for our Lego fixtures. Hell yeah. <laughs> and it's like if I people mean, know how for precision those and repeatable they are, <laughs> it's crazy. The so. secrets the tubes way. So oh what's the gosh. uh what what's the Lego uh We had a Lego tube? party and he we invited Wade. We even bought him a set and he he's like refuses to put Legos together. Huh. I'm not yeah, I, I don't like Legos for that reason. No. <laughs> Fag is what he said. <laughs> hey. <laughs> We're talking like like the he's, ultimate collector series. Said, grow up, in. Peter Pan. Yeah, yeah. 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 We like women. <laughs> Dating women is gay. I don't know when. I'll get this across to him one of these days. Like, what are you gonna do? Talk to women? Like, that's, that's the gayest shit not I've ever. Playing heard. with Legos, you're not. <laughs> yeah, playing with Legos with your boys. That's like manly. You're not shit. making a strong case. Right uh, well, if he has kids, at least we know he's. Uh, no, I don't have kids. Okay, so. No, there, you play with Legos for yourself then? Yes. yes. Oh. Yeah. Me okay. and me and multiple other of our coworkers. Huh. Grown ass men. Well, grown kinda, ass boys. Kind of like those magic cards. And yes. Things. Yeah. Building Lego things. Interesting. And they're like, why don't you come? We'll get you a set. I knew of a guy that uh, his license plate was Lego two by four. And I said, what the hell? What, what does oh, that yeah. mean? And he said, that's a, that's a critical. Com- well, I, two by four brick. <laughs> And I didn't know that was a thing until then when I asked him that. But, uh, I, I said I different was... Different strokes for different folks, man. Doing them a favor by not coming because I, in my mind, I've got this strong want to go crush their shit. Yeah. But it's like Godzilla, that shit. Just <laughs> well, so one of the guys was building this like $400 castle set. Okay. And then the other guy was building some Star Wars collector's bullshit. I was building a lighthouse that actually has a motorized... Have you ever had sex with a woman? <laughs> well, that's gay. <laughs> You gonna sleep with her afterwards? You guys gonna do each other's nails? We're gonna snuggle, spoon. Oh, that's fork. God, that's so gay. Uh, oh my god! I just gotta shoot something in the face. I mean, yeah, Coyote. but when you're not shooting in the face, we got him a. It was a Lego blacksmith set, and it was literally like him and like you've seen a setup over there. It was a little house. It was him, and it even had his dogs in it. I didn't notice this. 
Are y'all going to put it together? Because I'm never going to. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, that's that's cool. I, uh, if y'all put it together, I'll put it up in the studio. Different strokes for different folks. You, you know? gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep that like childish, like, like hope in the world burning. I do that with pranks. Yeah, I have a lot, like a lot of tearing childish. up grown men's Lego parties. <laughs> we have these bang snaps that I keep cases of, and they're like equivalent to a penny firecracker. Mm-hmm. Those things under a toilet seat are just amazing. My Oof. favorite was always uh, <laughs> sandblasting cabinets. You just anytime anybody gets in a sandblasting cabinet, we would like. Air hose it like to a water bottle. They go to blast and it just fucking explodes while their arms are in there. They like jump up in the air. That, that, Break that's their arms. I was just getting ready to say that. We do that. Snap ex- their arms. We do that exact. Well, I do that exact same shit. I have Snapchat. I'm a child and I take my air gun all the time and get a water bottle. And uh, everybody in the shop, as soon as they're out looking, I. It's so loud. Oh, so loud. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. So Don't that's, play that's, too much. So next time, hook that up to the sandblasting cabinet. That's then... my uh, childish outlet. <laughs> Well, you should try Legos. They're, yeah. they're for adults, too. Right. I'll take your word on it. <laughs> yeah. He said he's good. All right. Well, happy birthday, Wayne. Let's, uh, let's stop birthday. saying that. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. 40 next year. <laughs>